Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we dive into When by Daniel H. Pink. Published in 2018, When explores the significant role timing plays in our lives, delving into about 700 scientific studies across diverse fields such as economics, anthropology, and social psychology. This book offers an in depth look at the decisions we make and the timing behind these choices, providing a comprehensive understanding of the intricate relationship between timing and human behavior. Daniel H. Pink, a best-selling author recognized for his insightful books, brings his extensive knowledge and unique perspective to this topic. A Yale Law School graduate with a political background, including working as a speechwriter for Al Gore, Pink has consistently topped the New York Times book charts. His notable works include Drive, The Surprising Truth About What Motivates Us, and To Sell is Human, The Surprising Truth About Moving Others, making him a credible source on the subjects of motivation, productivity, and now, the science of timing. When is tailor-made for readers looking to boost their efficiency and gain insights into making better timed decisions? It's an invaluable resource for managers seeking tips on effective leadership and recent college graduates stepping into the synchronized rhythm of the professional world. Join us as we uncover the critical moments that shape our lives and learn how to navigate the when of decision-making with Daniel H. Pink's expert guidance. When The Scientific Secrets of Perfect Timing Introduction Discover the Power of Perfect Timing Imagine a world where every decision, from the smallest gesture to the most critical life choices, is timed to perfection. This isn't a fantasy. It's a reality that could profoundly impact our lives, careers, and well-being. Miles Davis, in his understated elegance, captured the essence of this concept when he said, time isn't the main thing, it's the only thing. Though he might have been referring to the rhythm of jazz, this mantra echoes through every aspect of our existence. We chase deadlines, strive for punctuality, and juggle multiple tasks, all ruled by the relentless ticking of the clock. It's a dance of precision, one that, as we will explore, plays a critical role not just in our productivity, but in the very fabric of our emotional well-being. In the intricate choreography of our daily lives, there is a hidden pattern, a cadence that guides our moods and productivity from Monday to Friday. This pattern, as it turns out, isn't arbitrary. Studies reveal fascinating insights into why we do what we do and when we do it, shedding light on the critical importance of timing in our lives. If you think the 9-to-5 routine doesn't apply to you, think again. The findings we're about to delve into offer a universal peek into human behavior that is as intriguing as it is enlightening, but there's more to the story than merely understanding our habits. You'll learn when to schedule surgeries and why certain times are statistically less risky. Ever heard of a nappuccino? It's a delightful concoction that might just revolutionize your power nap strategy and we'll tell you exactly how and why it works. And for those contemplating a marathon as their 30th birthday looms closer, there's a reason why this ambitious goal suddenly seems attainable, and it's deeply rooted in our perception of milestones and the ticking clock of life. Join us on a journey through time, not through the hours of the day, but through the decisions and moments that define our existence. Discover the power of perfect timing, and how, by paying attention to the rhythms of our lives, we can unlock a new level of efficiency, happiness, and understanding of the human spirit. Part one, unveiling the emotional rhythms of our daily lives. At first glance, our daily routines seem to be driven by a series of mundane tasks, from the ritualistic morning coffee to the evening stroll with the dog. Yet, beneath the surface of these daily practices, lies an intricate emotional pattern that ebbs and flows with the rise and fall of the sun. It seems our emotions dance to a rhythm of their own, 
a discovery that is both fascinating and a testament to the complexity of human nature. In an ambitious endeavor to map out the emotional landscape of our daily lives, researchers at Cornell University turned to an unlikely source, Twitter. Over two years, they sifted through an astounding 500 million tweets, searching for clues to the prevailing moods that define our days. What they found was a consistent pattern of emotional peaks and valleys, a surge of positivity in the morning, a notable dip in the afternoon, followed by an evening resurgence of good spirits. This emotional trajectory seems to hold true regardless of individual differences, suggesting a universal pattern to our daily emotional lives. Now, one might argue that Twitter, with its blend of bravado and banter, is hardly a mirror reflecting our true feelings. And indeed, the platform's penchant for sarcasm could cloud some of the findings. However, this pattern isn't unique to social media chatter. Using the day reconstruction method, DRM, which dives deep into the hour by hour experiences of individuals, behavioral scientists have traced the same arc of emotional highs and lows. This daily emotional rhythm, dubbed the morning peak, afternoon trough, and evening rebound, has profound implications, especially in the workplace. Consider the fascinating study by three professors at American business schools who analyzed over 26,000 earnings calls. These crucial interactions between CEOs and investors can sway stock prices, dictating the financial fate of companies. The findings were clear. As the day progresses, the emotional tenor of these calls dips, leading to more negative discussions. Hence, the strategic advice for corporations. Schedule your earnings calls in the morning to capitalize on the natural uplift in mood. This revelation not only sheds light on the best times for critical business communications, but also hints at a broader truth about productivity and creativity. As we navigate our days, being mindful of this emotional pattern could help us better plan our tasks from the most challenging to those that require a more upbeat spirit. The key takeaway, the clock doesn't just measure time. It also, in a way, tunes the human heart. Part two, harnessing your internal clock for peak productivity. We now understand that our emotional and energy rhythms follow a distinct pattern throughout the day. A universal truth that captures the essence of our shared human experience. Nevertheless, when it comes to when these peaks and troughs occur, one size does not fit all. This variance in daily energy and mood fluctuations is governed by what's known as a chronotype, your personal internal clock that dictates whether you're an early bird, a night owl, or something in between. Diving into the science of chronotypes reveals an intriguing diversity. While the standard chronotype adheres to the expected morning energy spike, midday slump, and evening recovery. A significant portion of the population, about one in four individuals, operates on a noticeably different schedule. Night owls, for instance, mirror the habits of historical figures like Thomas Edison and Gustave Flaubert, finding their stride in the late evening hours. This group tends to exhibit higher levels of creativity and a propensity for more neurotic and impulsive behavior. On the opposite end of the spectrum are the larks those who greet the day with vigor and wind down as the sun sets. This early riser chronotype is characterized by a stability, happiness, and introverted personality, with their energy peak occurring well before the rest of the world has hit the snooze button for the first time. Understanding your chronotype is more than an exercise in self-awareness. It's a strategic tool for optimizing your schedule to harness your most productive moments. For the majority who fall into the third bird category, somewhere between larks and owls, mornings are the golden hours for tasks demanding logic and concentration. Creativity flourishes later in the day when the mind is more open to abstract thinking. However, if you identify as an owl, consider inverting this approach. Embrace your analytical challenges at night, when your mind is at its sharpest, leaving the mornings for brainstorming and innovation. Regardless of your chronotype, the universal afternoon trough is an opportune time to tackle less demanding chores. And a pro tip for those seeking approval or consensus? Aim for morning meetings when decision-making minds are at their most receptive. 
In a world that often feels dictated by external schedules and deadlines, recognizing and respecting your internal clock is a powerful step toward not just greater productivity, but also a more balanced and fulfilling life. Part 3. Optimizing Alertness Through Strategic Breaks Acknowledging and adapting to our chronotype can significantly impact our daily performance and overall well-being. However, there's an intriguing twist in the tale of our internal clocks. They are not fixed entities. From the exuberant early mornings of our childhood to the late-night vigils of our teenage years, and back to embracing the dawn in our later years, our chronotype evolves over a lifetime. This shifting nature explains why teenagers struggle with the conventional early start of the school day, particularly when faced with demanding subjects like mathematics first thing in the morning. The education system and the healthcare industry are beginning to recognize the profound implications of timing and the necessity of breaks throughout the day. In Denmark, for instance, the timing of standardized tests has been scrutinized through research, revealing a discernible drop in student performance as the day progresses. Similarly, hospitals have observed a worrying trend, a decline in staff vigilance and an increase in medical errors as the clock ticks towards the afternoon. These errors aren't just concerning. They can be a matter of life and death. For example, the likelihood of mistakes in patient care jumps from 1% in the morning to 4.2% by late afternoon, alongside a significant dip in hygiene practices among hospital staff. The statistics are alarming, with an estimated 600,000 preventable infections occurring in U.S. hospitals annually, leading to a staggering $12.5 billion in avoidable costs, all potentially linked to the decrease in alertness and adherence to protocols as the day wears on. But there is a beacon of hope in the form of scheduled breaks. In the academic realm, Danish schools that introduced a 20 to 30 minute recess before afternoon examinations saw a notable improvement in test scores, counteracting the typical afternoon decline. Meanwhile, the healthcare sector has started implementing vigilance breaks. At the University of Michigan Medical Center, these pauses allow surgical teams to regroup, review procedures, and double check preparations right before an operation, a practice that has led to enhanced patient care and a reduction in complaints. Both of these interventions underscore a critical lesson the importance of taking intentional breaks throughout the day. By stepping back even briefly, we can refresh our focus, reset our vigilance, and ultimately enhance our performance and safety. Whether in the classroom or the operating room, recognizing the power of a pause could make all the difference. Part 4. Revitalize your day with strategic napping and breaks. In recent years, the approach towards breaks and downtime during the work and school day has shifted significantly, unfortunately, not always for the better. The reduction or elimination of recess and break times in schools under the mistaken belief that continuous work leads to improved academic performance contradicts a growing body of research highlighting the profound benefits of well-timed pauses. Breaks are not merely a luxury, they are a vital component of sustained productivity, enhancing cognitive function, mood, and overall well-being. Findings from DeskTime, a developer of productivity software, suggest an optimal break pattern for maximizing efficiency. 17 minutes of rest after every 52 minutes of work. However, even shorter breaks, such as a five-minute pause each hour, have been shown to significantly decrease fatigue while boosting motivation, creativity, and general mood the act of stepping away from work-related tasks, engaging in social interactions, or merely enjoying the tranquility of nature can serve as powerful stress relievers, offering a mental and emotional reset. Imagine the simple pleasure of leaving your phone at your desk and embarking on a leisurely stroll through a nearby park with a colleague. Such a break blends the benefits of physical activity, social connection, and exposure to nature marking it as an ideal reprieve from the demands of the day. Equally rejuvenating is the practice of napping, often underestimated in its capacity to refresh 
and revitalized. Many avoid naps, fearing the grogginess that can follow, yet this side effect typically arises only from extended sleep periods that exceed 20 minutes. The optimal nap, spanning between 10 and 20 minutes, has been shown to enhance focus, memory retention, and alertness for several hours post-slumber. An intriguing and effective twist to the traditional nap is the so-called nappuccino. This involves enjoying a quick cup of coffee immediately before settling down for a 20-minute nap, roughly the time it takes for caffeine to circulate through your bloodstream and begin its energizing effects. This clever timing results in a remarkable synergy. The restorative power of a short nap combined with the invigorating punch of caffeine setting you up for an exceptionally productive and alert aftermath. Embracing these strategies, from the ideal duration and timing of breaks to the power-packed nappuccino, can transform our daily routines, turning what might seem like lost time into invaluable moments of restoration and rejuvenation. Part 5. Leveraging the Midpoint for Success in New Endeavors The thrill of embarking on a new project often comes with visions of a seamless execution from start to finish. Yet reality swiftly reminds us that the journey is seldom without its bumps. To navigate the initial challenges with more grace and foresight, the concept of a pre-mortem emerges as a powerful planning tool. Drawn from medical terminology, where a post-mortem dissects causes of demise after the fact, a pre-mortem reverses this process, encouraging us to preemptively identify potential pitfalls before they materialize. This strategy involves imagining your project has failed and then working backward to pinpoint the factors that led to its downfall. Whether these hurdles include an overcrowded team, resources stretched too thin, or objectives that lack clarity, the pre-mortem aims to shine a light on these issues, enabling you to devise strategies to dodge them effectively. While much of productivity advice tends to focus on how to kick off projects with vigor or cross the finish line in triumph, the middle phase of any venture, often overlooked, holds substantial strategic value. According to researcher Connie Gersick's observations, the midpoint of a project can act as a critical moment of realization and rejuvenation for teams, a phenomenon she describes as the UO effect. Gersick's studies across various sectors, including healthcare, banking, and academia, revealed a common pattern. Projects often begin with slower progress, only for teams to experience a collective moment of urgency once they reach the halfway mark. This realization then spurs a significant uptick in productivity and focus as the deadline suddenly becomes palpably closer. This principle isn't confined to the workplace, it manifests compellingly in sports, too. Basketball teams trailing by a mere point at halftime often return to the game with heightened determination, driven by the motivational surge the midpoint brings. The close score acts as a tangible reminder of both where they stand and the opportunity that lies ahead, frequently resulting in a more aggressive and focused performance in the second half. Understanding and harnessing the power of the project midpoint, therefore, presents a unique opportunity rather than viewing it as merely another step along the path, recognizing this phase as the ideal juncture for reigniting team motivation and productivity can transform the trajectory of any endeavor. Using the midpoint as a strategic lever, you can channel the urgency and clarity it provides to fuel a strong finish, turning potential stagnation into a dynamic push towards success. Part 6. Navigating the finish line, goals, motivation, and the pitfalls of endings. The journey from the midpoint crisis to the successful culmination of a project is fraught with both promise and peril. On the one hand, the urgency recognized at the project's midway can be a powerful catalyst for collective action. On the other, it can spiral into chaos if not properly managed. To steer through this critical phase effectively, the resilience of the team and clarity of the project's objectives become paramount. One key strategy is to reiterate the project's foundational goals. If progress slows or morale flags, 
Revisiting the shared vision can reignite the initial enthusiasm and drive needed to push through to the end. Rather than introducing new roles or concepts in a bid to energize the team, realigning everyone's focus towards the established objectives provides a clearer and more direct path towards completion. However, as the finish line approaches, a peculiar phenomenon often emerges. Individuals may exhibit extreme behaviors driven by the desire to make the project's conclusion as impactful as possible. This tendency stems from our natural inclination to place disproportionate weight on endings, imbuing them with significant meaning. We yearn for our finale, whether of a project, an endeavor, or even life itself, to be memorable, to count for something more. This psychological dynamic is illustrated through the hypothetical comparison of two CEOs, one who was altruistic for the majority of her career, but turned self-centered towards the end, versus another who lived a self-serving life, but chose benevolence in his final years. Despite the evident difference in the overall quality of their lives, the inclination to emphasize endings can lead to a skewed perception, rating both lives as equally valuable. Moreover, this fixation on endings manifests in the behaviors of individuals approaching a new decade in age, the so-called nine-enders, who are more likely to pursue radical changes or extreme activities Whether it's attempting a marathon for the first time, embarking on an affair, or even experiencing existential crises, these actions underscore a deep-seated desire to end one chapter on a note of significance before beginning the next. Understanding the dual nature of this phase as both a source of renewed motivation and potential for extreme behavior is crucial for leaders and team members alike. By focusing on reasserting goals while remaining mindful of the irrational emphasis placed on endings, teams can navigate towards a successful and balanced conclusion, ensuring that the final sprint towards the finish line is marked by purpose, coherence, and reflection on the journey as a whole. Part 7. Crafting Meaningful Endings with Poignancy It appears there's a universal longing for endings to not merely arrive, but to do so with a resounding sense of closure and fulfillment. More intriguingly, we often yearn for these finales to evoke a sense of poignancy, a complex blend of joy tinged with sadness, which paradoxically enriches the happiness we feel. This craving for poignant conclusions is masterfully catered to by storytellers and filmmakers like Pixar, whose narratives like Up leave audiences in a bittersweet embrace of life's fleeting moments. Acknowledging our penchant for meaningful conclusions gives us the opportunity to intentionally create satisfying endings in our own lives. One approach to achieving this is by bridging the temporal gap between our present and future selves. An act as simple as writing a letter to your future self to be opened years later can encapsulate this idea. Surprisingly, What might seem like a mundane exercise at the moment transforms into a profoundly moving encounter with one's past thoughts and feelings when the letter is eventually read. This interplay between our current and future identities is crucial, not only for evoking poignancy, but also for fostering a deeper connection with our evolving selves. The wisdom that happiness is found in living in the moment only grazes the surface of a more profound truth. True fulfillment arises when we exist in harmony with our past and anticipated future selves. Contrary to the belief that we might drastically change over the years, fostering a sense of continuity with our future selves can significantly influence our decisions and behaviors in the present, from financial saving to healthier living choices. Indeed, prompting individuals to consider the near future, even just a few days ahead, can remarkably make them feel closer to their future selves, thereby motivating actions beneficial in the long run. In essence, as we navigate the intricate web of time, past, present, and future, our understanding and manipulation of it can greatly enhance our life's narrative. By cultivating moments of poignancy and ensuring our actions today resonate with our tomorrow, we can weave a richer, 
more fulfilling tapestry of life, one where endings, however bittersweet, bring a profound sense of closure and satisfaction. Final summary. The essence of achieving optimal productivity, fulfillment and happiness lies in mastering the nuanced science of timing. This exploration reveals that by tapping into our innate chronotype, we can align our activities with our body's natural rhythms, leading to more effective and satisfying outcomes. Beyond mere scheduling, the strategic use of breaks and naps emerges as a cornerstone for rejuvenating our mental and physical energies, enhancing creativity and maintaining motivation. Moreover, this journey illuminates the transformative power of the project's midpoint, a critical juncture for reigniting passion and focus, ensuring the path from inception to completion is both purposeful and productive. Through simple yet profound practices such as penning letters to our future selves, we learn to weave the tapestry of our past, present and future into a cohesive narrative, enriching our lives with depth and poignancy. In essence, the art of timing is not just a method for navigating our days more efficiently, but a holistic approach to living more fully, making each moment count by infusing it with intention, awareness, and an appreciation for the intricate dance of time. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then, happy reading and happy listening.